Karachi. Uh, it's uh, roles in colonial and post-colonial uh, history. And Tariq Karachi is a page who's, which is run by somebody who won't be revealing their identity but is interested in international relationship relations and um, gender and women's studies specifically so we will be talking about history and history through visual references uh, we will be talking about micro history and uh, resources where how do you conduct your research and uh, where do you take your um, what are your resources of um, and what do you read and um, the films and related to politics and history so um, we will just wait for Tariq Karachi to join in so we can continue this but meanwhile please send in your emails or your whatsapp numbers or your phone numbers uh, so we can update you about our upcoming events, our talk sessions and a lot of things that we're doing. We would want to update you. And yes, we will wait for her to join. And please send in your questions. Um, we will be answering them later um once we discuss and Hello. Hello. Hi. How are, you? how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank and you how for is... inviting me. No, no, no. I'm really excited to talk, talk to you about your project. And I think a lot of people are excited because people were sending me some, you know, uh, they were really excited that um, you will be coming on board to talk to us. So, how is the quarantine going? And um, yeah, it's going, it's going, just trying to get by. I'm working on the side as well, so it's not too bad. Okay, and are you still, like, in quarantine, are you still working on the Karachi project? Are you working on, because a lot of um, people out have shifted their focus they're working on covid series and you know um so in the beginning of quarantine i started posting a lot because i had so much free time basically my college ended early and everyone had to go back home um and so i came back and there was nothing to do so i started focusing a lot on the page and i made a lot of posts um, I think my uh, following built up a lot in that time period as well. But in the last month or so, I started working uh, somewhere else. And so that makes it kind of hard. It has long hours as well. That makes it kind of hard to research and get everything done. So really, it's, it's honestly, the page is honestly a natural process. I don't schedule anything or make a schedule for myself that I have to post this many times. It's really just whatever <laughs> piques my interest. And whenever I have, because when I get ex extremely interested in something, I'll like be addicted to posting about it for like weeks. But then I'll have like kind of like a dead period where I'm like not really inspired by much. So, yeah. yeah, I think also in the quarantine, it's a bit difficult when you're working with, um, you know, like I've seen on your page, you post a lot, you post pictures of history and pictures that are from the street, pictures that kind of uh, reflect to history and mm. so I think in quarantine because we don't really go out that much it's hard to get inspiration from what is going on like around us so we do exactly. have our periods yeah. yeah yeah no because even the pictures that I have been posting have been from 
in from the winter when I came back for December holidays and have been like I've been digging through the pictures in my phone you know I had so many plans for this summer I wanted to work with uh, Heritage Walk Karachi they're doing amazing work in archiving and mapping I wanted to go out and start like an independent like research thing for my page but you know nothing worked out like everybody's plan sort of went in the air but that's okay I guess yeah I think um we all had our plans and 2020s is kind of <laughs> yeah no for sure everything is just like we we can't really do anything about it i think this is the time where we can um kind of push our energy that we just have to be productive and do what we can do like what we can bring the most out of it so yes that Literally, is what yeah. we have so do you think that instagram and social media really worked for you for this project because it's all virtual and now everything is virtual everything is everybody is like doing instagram and live stories and everything so do you think um doing something on paper if you wanted to do like you talked about karachi heritage and archiving it on paper or digital or something but now taking it to instagram it does really make sense and it also kind of reaches to a lot of people Oh yes, hundred percent. For example, I'm not like a professional academic, right? I I don't have a history PhD. I'm not in a master's program. It's something that his, like you know these these things that were much more restricted to academic circles or professional circles, uh, like has become much more accessible to students and everyday people with an interest in the subject, right? So I can just make an account and start exploring on my own. The internet is such. Pakistan history of Pakistan you know you don't know really know who's running those but you yeah. also realize that it's so much more accessible to read about it because they're curating the information for you and it's so much access more accessible for me as somebody who runs a page to be interested in something and share my work with people i don't necessarily have to be like a fancy student about it, which is also really cool there's so many accounts now doing that which is which is amazing there's like even in india there's this account called unzip delhi which is i think one of the coolest accounts i'd 100% recommend it to anybody who's like like okay. watching and he's just somebody who goes around and like tells stories about, about delhi and stuff and he's not necessarily an academic which says something because you don't have to have an academic background to share things like history and yeah. like or anything you're interested in really yeah and but then how do you see this like a lot of people like in this quarantine i think we have connected to a lot of people who are talking about history but before this period also a lot of people were uh, posting about history and nostalgia and south asian history so mm -hmm. how do you see this that you are also doing it and um there are pictures that you see on every account there are yes. pictures of you know PIA and i think there are some fair hall um famous pictures or you know like partition pictures how do you see that how do you kind of filter that like or why would somebody um follow all of these pages yeah no i definitely agree that there has been a sort of explosion in history pages recently like and yeah. heritage pages and like people are more interested in their culture which which i find to be a really good thing and of course there will be some people who will focus on the more mainstream of the of the content right like you have pi ki purani pictures which is like everywhere pi is air yeah. hostesses and you know whatever to each their own whatever somebody is interested in and i guess you feel like i i i like the fact that there's so much out there to the point where you can curate what you want to follow right there isn't yeah. like one place to get it there's so many places which is how it should have been for so long right but now we get more than the pi air hostess says you get old pictures people submitting of their own family which is yeah. amazing right we didn't have that before or you have old pictures people find in their houses or you have like sketches or you have you know there's so much now which is which is good in a way but also there is a lot of information out there at the same time so you have to like find your way through it yeah So how uh, did Tarikh Karachi start? Like tell us about the page. Um so last summer I was <clears throat> working at this non-profit in Karachi called Ahang 
and i was you know i it, it's just like a social um uh, it's you know done anything about it and then one day i was thinking that you know we know so we know about pakistan history to an extent obviously our our knowledge isn't perfect given how our syllabus is lacking but like we still know about it but karachi's history people know from like broken stories or something you hear here and there it's not as well documented it's not as well um told as for example mughal cities like lahore right yeah. so i was just like you know we need some place or we need something that more focuses more on this city because it hasn't been done before and i mean it has been done before you have like uh, websites and you have like blogs like the karachi wala which has been doing amazing work for a long yeah. time yeah there he's incredible like he does really good stuff uh, i got a lot of my resources from him actually in his blog um so i was just like you know i want I to start think of I always yeah. think of uh, contacting him when I am in Karachi but I always have a very short trip so mm-hmm. maybe next time Oh yeah I, I I have no idea like who it really is I know he's like a blogger uh, sorry he's a journalist but like yeah. I've been following for lo- him from a long time from my personal account as well So yeah so I was just like you know I want to start my own thing and kind of do it for myself it was more started more as a passion project for myself because i wanted to learn more i i knew a little bit from my dad and from my mom and their own childhood experiences but i was just like you know i want to learn more how did this all come about how did we enter like so much, how did identity politics become such a defining feature of the city how you know you even just not even that right because what you hear about karachi is either before zia everything was great we had casinos there was alcohol that's all you hear right but then yeah. and then you had mqm and then everything like it was got bad it yeah. was called it was called the new york of asia yeah but then that's that's a very like skewed way to look at things because yeah. it's also very elite to say of looking at things because karachi is not this glamorous place yes it was a glamorous place for certain people who lived here but not for everybody there was still quite a bit of violence there was quite a bit of trouble and hardship that people went through and like we have to kind of move beyond like the clifton and the like you know southern old town view we have of the history of karachi to something more than that because it is much more complex in my opinion than what we've been told so i guess that's why i wanted to start it because i wanted to learn more myself and it kind of just became something on the way and how did you like only like uh, and um, for how long have you been doing this so for a year i've been i've been doing i started last july actually this around this week last year oh wow yeah this is yeah. you should take this as your uh, first anniversary celebration oh yeah definitely i'm so honored i never expected anybody would want to talk to me or anything like that so i want to know how you kind of kept doing it only for garachi like yeah I'm you always hear these stories that oh bachpan mein karachi aisa tha amma mm. ke se ke bachpan mein karachi aisa tha bade hue karachi aisa hai par humne karachi ko istani dekha karachi badal mm. ke i think we all can relate to it like when i went to karachi or even if i want to talk about lahore it's the same the stories are the same so how uh, you only obviously like you know traveling and coming back to karachi and how you only uh, kept it to karachi or do you think of expanding or Do you think Karachi is more diverse, or um, there's more, you know, yeah, no, the, the more know. layers to Karachi? That's why. So it's it's been really tough to keep it to to like one scope to keep it to Karachi because I've been I, when I read I find so many interesting things about cities in in Pakistan about cities in in, in India in Bangladesh and I want to post about them but I'm just like. I have to control myself. Like I, I won't, I won't post. If I do, then I'll post on my story. But it has to be somehow linked to it because I guess that is why my followers followed me. Um, so there will be. But the thing is, because Karachi is, has such a um big population of people, a diverse population of different groups, there is yeah. a way that I can branch out, right? So when I talk about Urdu speaking populations, or if I talk about like migration, and if I talk about, for example, I did a post on ruwabza which is my favorite post that i've ever done and it starts out in delhi but it ends in karachi because like the ruwabza was basically like created in like it was come like it was created in delhi and the office of ruwabza the people who made it i can't remember the um, 
name Hamdar Bia. They opened yeah. an office in Karachi afterwards. So I can kind of play around and bend the rules a little if I find something more really interesting that has something to do with Karachi as well. So it's not it's not like a, it's not a hard and fast rule really. Yeah. And and maybe later you can kind of connect to other cities because you know like I I think one thing we all have like you talked about syllabus to hum hamesha yahi sunte the ki karachi was the capital and hmm. you know there was this um, political or national like label given to karachi and now when you see like when you because i know a lot of people who have not traveled to karachi and their image of karachi is something else like in their mind but when you see pictures of karachi especially old pictures and the kind mm-hmm. of work that you're doing and like we were talking about like there were bars and casinos and everything and even i think in the 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 politics of lahore and karachi because a lot of people get into this argument and mm-hmm. a lot of people can't really um understand the the you know dynamics of the city because it's so diverse and oh, i yeah. think like you said that um, you know in comparison to lahore like a, like lahore is like still well a uh, better documented or you know there is more there's more um, you know history written and talked about lahore uh, and lahore and it's a much has, older city right it's a much yeah, much older and, than city than karachi is yeah and lahore has always been like even if you even today when you read books and see pictures and documentaries about lahore it's all about that nostalgia and and it's it's like that that nostalgia is never going to break it's never going to disconnect mm-hmm. with lahore but i think with karachi it's different because karachi is so diverse and i think a lot of people who don't really live in the city they i don't think they can really understand it through somebody just saying that you know it's so diverse but i i think to really live in the city and experience that the ek to the city is so big theek hai yes, or it's the, huge. the communities that um you know have as in matlab mai to i can't really um pin point because i've been to karachi so many times but i'm still not like i can't say like ye ye yeah no it takes I guess living here really does um, yeah. change things. But because see, because it is such a young city, what I've been noticing is that, like now that we have like, like the rootedness in Karachi really started to build more in our generation because our parents, like you know, they were children of well, most to them were children of people who had migrated, right? So that rootedness yeah. isn't as much as there it is as in cities. as it is in cities in like punjab as it is in lahore right like families are yes. are, are yeah so chill like people in my generation especially in their 20s and maybe early 30s have begun to feel a sort of rootedness to the city now so you know that is that is interesting to see because and now you see there is like this explosion of like poetry and literature and art related to karachi as odes to karachi and i feel like that's happening more now which is very interesting compared to yeah. before because when i try to look at poems that are about karachi is about poems about people who have um kind of like written for their city it's not as prominent in previous previous generations as it is now like you see this whole like explosion of romanticism and romanticizing the city and it's very popular like more so today and there and it's about like you know in the at the i the in terms of what you said about the diversity yes it's an extremely diverse city and that has its problems and that also has born a lot of art and a lot of resistance and a lot of interesting subcultures as well so for example the RUC is a hub for like balochi culture right and because yeah. a lot of people in that area have not been taken care of by the government and you find your own way that okay if the government isn't going to take care of me i'm going to like you know where as we as a community will take care of ourselves or we as a community will do these things for ourselves right yeah yeah that's like it's interesting now because it's an interesting yeah, way that the I, city governs and operates yeah yeah i have been to liari by the way i say that as an achievement because so many <laughs> times i told people that you know take me to liari like karachi i have told them to uh, you know when i'm in lahore i tell them please take me to liari. 
Definitely but then I kind of managed people. to go and and yeah, yeah, you're right. Like if the government doesn't uh, take care of them, they have to um, come up with the solutions. And I think yeah. in those solutions, um, when you are not being taken care of as a community or as a city or as a group, um, you can only come up with solutions that are related to survival but yeah. not not solutions of archiving yourself or archiving what is happening inside um mm-hmm. internally in in the group or in the community like mm-hmm. you know i think a lot of people who would want to archive or want to document what is happening in the city or a certain group or a certain community will not be from layari or yeah no other, you know so if if there are people who like karachi wala and you know you or me or people who are just interested in seeing what is happening inside the city galiyon mein kya ho raha hai um sadkon mein kya ho raha hai back sides pe kya ho raha hai buildings ke towers ke andar kya ho raha hai so all these stories really interest us and i think uh, a lot of times why we are unable to archive and why i think uh, we lack archiving is because we don't really um get out from the solutions of survival you know so mm-hmm. a lot of people are like you said there is this explosion of uh, instagram pages with nostalgia and south asian history people are really wanting to bring out those stories because they were yeah. hit somewhere by people who were only looking for their own solutions so how because you're interested in uh, international uh, history and relations and how do you see south asian uh, history and what i'm interested like we can talk later about it that how you interested in it and how do you kind of see the archiving side of it or maybe start from how do you see it affects our identity of who we are yes for sure um so i go to um a univer i go to the university of toronto right and so over there i'm a history major and what i have learned in my three years at uft has been like very empty in terms of the south asian region and it is really disappointing to me because i'm like so jealous of some of my lums friends who know so much more anybody who studied here because the pakistan history is compulsory i think in the first year to study yeah. they know so much more about their own history and it's and you know you'd have to take certain core classes and it's interesting to see how like you know world history when they teach it is all so westernized right and it's not really world history it's more european history and yeah. north american history and we'll put like a bit of the vietnam war in there we'll put a bit of the afghanistan yeah. war in there and that's all you really learn and so my interest in south asian history i have my knowledge that i have which is not that like that it's not that like much because it's honestly just full it's honestly just taken from certain books that i'll read or certain articles that i'll read it's not more of a formal education and i do think that south asian history is extremely important and pakistan history is extremely important for us to know and the way we know it also i think there's a lot of holes in there we don't know the full story a lot of it has been hidden from us a lot of the syllabus has been um changed or modified or like uh, like changed to follow a certain narrative and in terms of how the archives affect south asian history like there are really rich archives of the like south asian history around the world but there but the best ones are not in our region right like we have like soas university and it has the number one library in the world related to like age studies in asia africa and the middle east but we don't have those archives pakistan has the national archive of pakistan but it's you know it's it's not as good as some of the archives that are related to our region india has a really good archiving system but still that sort of archiving is kind of inaccessible to common people or even to like me and you unless we go out okay. there and yeah take on a research project so i guess pages like this and pages like pakistan history and prana pakistan and history of pakistan and whoever is doing whatever they're doing or brown history is are important mm-hmm. because it makes the archive accessible to normal people or regular people who are not about to go 
do an archive and sit and leaf through letters, right? Like yeah. your your like archives are so important because it sort of informs and empowers in a certain way that okay, like this is a part of who I am, right? Tell somebody about like a really like people find history boring because they can't relate to it, but as soon as you tell them something that they they can relate to, they're immediately interested. Right, you can see on anybody's post. For example, my post. If I post about a certain area, so many people will comment and be like, "Oh, I'm from here. Oh, this store is in this area. Oh, I lived, I grew up yeah. here." Like, thank you for posting about this. And it's interesting because as soon as you make it relatable and as soon as you make it accessible, it immediately changes how you view it and how important it is. To yeah, others. and and you like you talked about archiving and uh, the archives that are not accessible and. a lot of countries have their archives and in pakistan it is i i kind of feel very like i feel sad that uh we are still not very archive research driven mm-hmm. and i think we do have reasons but i think now is the time where like like pages like you have mentioned and your page and a lot of people who are interested like somebody messaged that you know documenting or photographers and you know documentary makers and uh they do have this time to archive a lot of stuff mm-hmm. um and also the platforms like now it's visual so uh, virtual so like you know digitally you can do that but like you said that in history or in syllabus a lot of people find it very boring because they can't really you know like uh they can't really relate to it in that way mm-hmm. uh because the way we put history in our like you like in pak studies so jisne pakistan mein padha hai aur pak studies padha hai um it's not that relatable like it's more mm-hmm. about the movements the national side of it Uh, yes and it's less sure. cultural and it's less like a, you know hamare ilake mein ye hota tha aise hota tha like you are doing so do you think when you're archiving history or you're documenting something um uh, it becomes more relatable when you give it a visual when there's a photo of it when mm-hmm. there is a visual reference to like a poster of ruwabza or like you know like a like an archive in a photo with a photo reference do you think it works for whatever instagram or for archiving or to connect with people because uh, now we see a lot of people doing podcasts and a lot of people but their reach is i kind of feel that their reach yeah. is less and you kind of are distracted but when you are given a picture uh it's more reachable it kind of seems more accessible and i don't know with photography yeah i am a photographer that might be a reason but i also think that because it's visual people can relate to it easily and that's i think the best way to archive but what how do you look at it especially because you're uh, studying abroad and how do others look at it also like no i i definitely agree i i Yeah, I definitely agree that when you add a, a visual to it it becomes much more appealing and people are just much more likely to be attracted to it and to read that the, the text that is under it or even if you don't to go with something you even if you do not have a picture to go with something if you post a picture for example of a letter you found instead of posting the entire text of it in like a text form somebody will be more likely to be attracted to this old like nostalgic letter picture so definitely it is about how you present it to the audience i think podcasts are a good medium but again you know it has to be like the real the right person needs to be talking the right person needs to have the right voice to talk or has have to has like has to have like some a certain way of speaking or like ha- or a good storytelling yeah. manner to kind of get that person attracted into the podcast but with a picture anybody can post it right anybody can do that anybody can take a picture and share it with their friends and see and, and be like see look at this so definitely i think instagram is a very good medium to share um history or to share anything really and that's why i guess we've seen such an explosion in it and the visuals are just not stopping now because people are going into vi- uh, into yeah. like gifs and like graphics and videos and like i would love to see how you know history can move on from there like and can take sort of that platform of digital storytelling 
as a next step to reaching more people yeah but like i would really want to know like because you're studying in toronto and you're staying here and you're doing this project how do people look at it in toronto or your class fellows or your uh, colleagues how do they see it how do they see um, archiving because i really want to know that people now like you said anybody can do it and mm-hmm. it's very accessible and you can just take a picture of like like if somebody wants to start a page of karachi they mm-hmm. might want to take pictures from you mm-hmm. they want, might want to share pictures taken from you and share their story right so it has not it is not that difficult of a process but still with that accessibility and with that everyone can do it why do you think that there's still a big gap between uh i would say why are we still very hesitant to archive how do others how do um people abroad see it um because i kind of see that people from in in other countries they're very conscious of how they're archiving and just, just taking archiving seriously uh in terms yeah. of photography in terms of you know letters and text and uh, illustrations and everything so how do you see that like what what do you think is the is why why do we lack archiving is it just our attitude towards archiving um so in toronto when i went as my first year i was part of this like intensive class sort of which taught about history and politics and one of our projects was to take a one like choose one person who is in the U, the university of toronto archives or the Tor- city of toronto archives and kind of research about them and find out about them through like through their one box that they had dedicated in the archival library and that was a really interesting project to undertake especially as a first year and the and the meticulousness with which everything is archived everything is alphabetized everything has been saved and preserved and there's a certain process with which you have to go through everything and flip through everything and so you know it's very admirable to see how those things have been preserved but i guess to answer your question like an intro like for example i have a roommate who's been seeing it over there who's like a toronto native who's been seeing me like build this page she's one of my best friends and she's super interested in what i do because she does about it but in terms of like um why we don't really have a strong archive culture i think i would answer that with because i don't like written archives and written doc documented history in like from what i've seen is a very like european or like colonial thing to do right like to the written word is law or written history is law right that's what you've seen like you know but the thing is in cultures like ours or for example even in like um indigenous like, like north american cultures of like native american tribes it's all about oral history it's all about yeah. oral storytelling and that is how we preserve our stories and of course Document- that's not- It yeah exactly sense. exactly yeah no definitely and so i think that is how because that is more like that's how people like we tell our stories for example like um uh, even in majlises for example it's all oral storytelling it's all yeah. oral history you can look at it that way of course everybody knows it but it's still a form of how people have passed down certain stories for generations and generations and generations right and i think that is how people in south asia people in pakistan have preserved their stories and even partition yeah. is all oral history right like yeah. we've written it but like yeah. the people who experienced it didn't for the most part yeah so yeah even even if you see uh, practices like dastan boi mm-hmm. um all of these practices are like all oral and obviously they're written but uh, they're practiced as you know um story or, telling yeah the, yeah 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 the the uh, and the essence of it is very different like you said it's a very col- colonial thing it's like documented and everything is categorized and you know it's very systematic in that way but in our cultures it's very different yeah so talking about oral history i would want to mention one of our favorite uh, um <laughs> remembrance of a separation and i think um what i like about that book or about that project is not only that the subject you know like talking about 
uh, partition or interviewing people about what they experienced. But also I think that when I was doing my uh, research um, and I was interested in material culture, I kind of mm -hmm. thought that this project was a perfect mix for a student or for a person who's interested in photography or the visual arts and the text or the oh, writing. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so sure. I got really interested in that and I started to like um, read and get to know about the project, what it is about. And then I got to know about the, the Museum of Material Memory. And I would want to know your take on it because uh, it's archiving, there's photography, there's visual references, there's history, there's South Asian history, there's migration. Um, and um, the second um, part that we, uh, I, I think we kind of missed that uh, you are very interested in gender mm -hmm. and you're minoring in women's studies, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of women who shared their story through their ornaments and their saris and textiles and, and so on. So, yeah, um, yeah so w w what is your take on it? Uh, why, like, you know, why we don't really have a strong archiving culture and stuff. Basically, so what I was just thinking as you were talking was that maybe the reason that we don't archive the way that the West archives and has, like, obviously we do, but it's not a big thing. It's not somebody, people don't have some huge em emphasis on it, it is because that way of archiving is so devoid. I mean, not so devoid, but it is devoid of emotion and people's like lived experiences. And so that's why Anshul Malhotra's book is so appealing to so many people is because she takes history and she also captures the emotion and the pain and the suffering and the lived experiences of people. And that is a lot about how I think people tell their stories. And so I think that's why visuals and um, uh, and material memory is much more appealing and much more, I think, something people should do is because it allows you to capture the history and the emotion at the same time. Because history, you know, is like people say it's such an objective subject. It's such a dry subject. It has, it has no, like, it has nothing to it. But in, in reality, we, we think that it should be like that. But I don't think it should be, right? Like, everybody, if you add that emotion to it, and if you allow it to be emotion, I think it would be a much more appealing and much more, uh, like a much better way to archive. And I think that should, and we should, we should not necessarily follow other people's models, but rather follow our own, right? So I really love the way that like remnants of separation worked yeah. because it allowed emotion to enter and also taught so many people. It's such a far reaching book now. Um, and in terms of gender, there's a really good book called the Other Side of Silence by Urvashi um, Bat Batalia, and she basically um, puts together this book of narratives of women who went through partition and went through the horrific things that they that they had to see and they they had to go through. So it is, and so she specifically focuses on m more marginalized communities, marginalized people who are usually silenced by like the regular archive or who are afraid to come out and talk but or who are like yeah. restricted by certain societal boundaries. But you know, like that's what I believe. Yeah. yeah. Also like, like you were talking, I uh, remembered this film called Khamosh Pani. I saw it, uh, I think when I was in college. And I think it's also about those women who were left behind. And also the kind of violence they went through and a lot of women were suggested to give up on their lives and you know because uh, a lot of uh, mm. people thought that women will face something so before that they face some kind of violence they should give up on their lives so it's but the whole I, idea of it's the whole idea of death before dishonor you know this whole thing that is very prevalent in yeah. like in, pa in Pakistan till today, right? We still have yeah. honor killings till today, yeah. Yeah. So do you think that um, Tari Karachi might be a research project? Um, that's a really good question. I really hope it does. So right now I don't necessarily consider myself as a formal archive, maybe more sort of a cur 
curatorial platform because I'm I'm taking other people's like work and crediting them of course but taking other people's stuff and putting it out there for people to see I would love for it to become a sort of digital archive so next semester is my fi- next year is my final year at UFT and one of the courses I'm taking is called is a digital history kind of history storytelling course where you learn how to make a digital uh, storytelling platform and you choose your own community or your own kind of independent project as to what you want to kind of archive. So I emailed my professor and sort of told him that my idea for this is to focus it and take my seek my own stories from Karachi. So hopefully it does become that in the future. I definitely want to continue in, in the field of history, in the field of storytelling and archiving. So I think maybe that would be the next step. Another thing I really want to do is just, you know, record people's own stories about the city. It's like, you know, move beyond partition. Like, you know, people have done a lot of work on, on partition, but what about the last 50 years? What about the last 30 years? Where Where is that going? What are the stories and related to that? Where are they going to be? So I definitely want to make it a research project. I just need to figure out how I'm going to do that. I think uh, um, I do agree that a lot of people have worked on partition, but I think that um, in Pakistan, the work on partition is still less Mm -hmm. as compared to the work that is done in India. Um, Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the writings, the movies, the films, the books, I think a lot is done. And um, and I think it's still kind of, um, I mean, uh, when I started, uh, when I said that I'm very um, interested in partition, um, a lot of people said, oh, bahut kar liya hai, bahut kar liya hai, sab kar liya hai. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, um, and I didn't know that partition ke par kitna kaam ho chuka hai. India mm-hmm. mein kuch films mein mein dekhi thi, jis taan ye um, haam hoosh paani hai, or kuch or, the earth is a, 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 a film. Or is that I films any kuch dekhi thi, but I I didn't know that what big of this you know like how big was this when I was in college, and uh, but then um, I kind of did my photography and graduated, and then when I um, got into my masters, I said that this is what I'm interested in, but I'm not really interested in partition partition. I'm more interested in memory and nostalgia, and then mm-hmm. kind of uh, then. I started to like interview my grandparents and you know uh, Mm -hmm. relatives and all and then partition kind of the chapter opened for me and that's how I got interested in that because I had to read about it and all and then after after hearing this a lot that uh, so much has been written so much has been made on partition I uh, I I, um, discovered Anchal's work and mm-hmm. I thought that, no, this is like, you know, there is still so much that you can to do. To be done. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And, yeah, so uh, that kind of really, like, gave me, a, gave me a new start. But when I was, uh, I was working on it, my way of archiving, I, I'm really interested when I, also little listen to Anchel and listen to other people or talk to other people. I really want to know how they archive or how what is their process. Do they interview mm-hmm. people? Do they read a lot? Uh, do they um, take references from literature? Because that's also one part I think which is very um, kind of we touch literature like we it's like mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so what is your process towards archiving, or even in uh, even when you're running this page, uh, how do you uh, go about it? Like, even if you want to take this as your research, how do you think it's going to be for you? What what this what will be the strategies? I think um, from what I can garner from how I've done university projects is like you. I guess you start out with building your base knowledge. So you find um, like some core texts that are very like important to understanding Karachi's history or some core literature or people who have already been working on it and kind of get their knowledge and kind of um, let like inform yourself on that and then from there I suppose you choose what 
you exactly you want to explore and i personally want to do it in in a way that is connected with people and connected with lived experience so i would want to interview people ideally but no i definitely agree with you the whole idea of taking on an archival project or to take on a research project such as this is so intimidating because the process you just have to put yourself out there right you just have to take a risk and do it but it's, it's which is harder than sitting behind a computer and compiling it something into an essay it to, rather than working with people it's a lot more emotional intelligence as well as like general like you know academic book smartness that is required so yeah definitely i i also have no idea where to start but with with my own page yeah. i will like it's a very natural process i'll just be you know doing something else and i'll have an idea and i'll google it first and then i'll try to find academic sources on it if that's not available i'll try to see what news articles are available on it there are there are a few books on karachi that are like that are considered to be um very important in its history there's um there's let me find it i've written it down yeah so um i wrote a book called the dual city karachi during the raj which is supposed to be like i've been trying to get my hands hand on it hands on it but it's like hard to find which is basically a a very comprehensive um uh a comprehensive guide to karachi's architectural history and then there is this book that i have on uh, have with me called karachi order disorder and the struggle for the city by lauren gaier who talks basically about urban politics in karachi in the last 30 years and he's he's written a very informative comprehensive book so there are the like, karachi's book resources are a few there's a lot of academic articles on it though karachi has a lot of literature in terms of like articles not as many books maybe but um there is definitely a lot out there so, so it is intimidating if you don't know where to start or what exactly you're doing yeah so sometimes does this happen to you that when you see a lot of people working on history and archiving and um maybe working on karachi do you think you're kind of running out of time and you have to pace it up and um um uh, because everybody is doing is it, it so you have this kind of sense of tension that you have to um kind um, of cope up with thing or everybody or the pages or the the archiving and not exactly i don't think i i don't think i'm worried about that because i i can i i know that i have a unique take on it i know that i have like my own independent voice that if i ever do something should shine through but um i i mean it is very intimidating because people are doing such incredible stuff and i'm just like okay you know i'm just a third year at university i have a little bit of time but yeah definitely i want to speed it up but it's hard i wanted to do a lot this summer but i couldn't because of corona but careful i guess it it will just work out the way it works out but yes i definitely want to continue in this and it's i've learned so much in a year that i never knew like a year ago or about processes yeah. about researching that i never knew a year ago so i'm hoping that you know i never thought i would learn so much from an instagram page or researching for an instagram page but hopefully that will be a guiding so, force like, as well do- yeah. yeah i'm done so sorry, go sorry. ahead no no there was a lag in the video i i didn't want to cut you um yeah but that's where i'm at right now yeah so like like the whole project is about karachi and the karachi the city itself it like i said so many layers and the, mm-hmm. and if you start mapping the city like there's like unlimited like possibilities but do you see um this whole project or history or archiving or whatever label you would want to give this do you think this will somewhere connect to the province or the other cities that might have a little influence of karachi or because of karachi they are very um they are untouched they are kind of underestimated or uh, you know they they are not explored as such uh, because obviously like if somebody comes to punjab obviously they do talk about lahore but living mm-hmm. in lahore we there are other cities that we look up to you know ke chai ye cheez yahan se milegi ye khas cheez yahan ki hai and you know so do you see that uh, this might somewhere or there should be um a project that connects to other uh, other cities in the province or other other places you know like or the overall 
dynamics of it because karachi kind of takes all the attention because oh yeah the- it it definitely does because it's so it's so big it's it's such a it's like the beating heart of the province in a way right but the problem is it does take away attention from a lot of the surrounding areas and i think that was the issue with parties like mqm that were just so focused on karachi and not exactly on the entire province and how to better like sindh as a whole right and my one of my best friends is is sindhi and she she laments a lot about this she is just like you no know, a lot of our literature has been lost a lot of our folk tales have been lost a lot has been lost because you know it, like people don't pay attention to it or people don't hear about it much so i definitely do hope that if like you know i don't have that see personally as well i don't have a lot of knowledge on the rest of the province but i should build my build it up because karachi at the end of the day is part of sindh and does have a rich history as part of sindh more than just you know karachi on its own so yes hopefully once i get started on the project that i intend to take i can learn more about the wider context of where we're located so before we wind up i want you to share some fun facts or some recommended films or books um um or so sadly we don't really like have a lot of films on karachi itself um but like definitely if you haven't seen which is my view a basic recommendation but if you haven't seen it already the vice guide to karachi is really fun watch um it's a really fun like five part documentary that uh, that is just very interesting the way vice did it it was on their first films before they became this huge like media organization but yes definitely other books that i recommend is um the other side of silence by rishi bhadaria remnants of a separation by anshul malhotra i recommend this book also called mr and mrs jinna the marriage that shook india by sheila reddy it basically explores like jinna's life and jinna's marriage and how it affected him and um i also do recommend the the book about the by, the book by lauren gaier about uh urban politics in karachi it's called order disorder and the struggle for the city that's a really really good book and yeah that's i think those are my recommendations i think there's a lot more articles that i would recommend that i could send to you that yeah. you might be able to book put up but yeah film in karachi is much more lacking i guess that's the issue like we there's so many netflix specials that could just come out from our city alone but like um like netflix doesn't touch us because there's so many restrictions and so much banning culture and all of that as a yeah. problem with, with with being in pakistan as well right yeah and and any fun fact you would want to share about karachi or um uh, uh just... okay yeah somebody wants to okay so what i can do or maybe you can comment right i can comment. i can com- i can yeah okay so i think i okay um, what i can do is i can yeah. do is i will post it on my story post it on the sweetgar story and you can tag me and i'll repost it yeah and people can you can send me and i can also post the, uh, this any um, any fun facts i would want to know something fun story about karachi or about your project or uh, why okay you... so it's um so one thing that i found that i haven't posted about yet is that uh faz ahmed faz used to teach in a school in liari like when he was i, th- I think yeah i think that's a, that was one of my next few posts and so he used to teach in a school in liari and he had quite a few like academic pupils who looked up to him a lot and like you know like followed him let me just look up the exact name of the school and i'll let you know what it is um yeah so he was the principal there he was the principal there he was yeah, the principal so he, where sorry in a school in liari actually okay 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 yeah in liari um at the haji abdullah harun college one of karachi's key learning centers at the time yeah that was where wow. he was the principal yeah Wow. in the 60s so, in the late 60s yeah so we are really looking forward to this post and many more to come from you yeah i have a post, and... i have a picture of him as as like sitting with his like fellow students and like or his fellow teachers in um 
in a class or sorry not in a class like for a school picture so i'll find that uh, i'll i'll find that and i'll post it today actually that's what i'll do so we we are looking forward to this and we're looking forward to where this unfolds and where this project goes and Thank we you. would want to talk more about the project and your interests in research and research in terms of photography also and we would want to catch up again but oh, for, for sure now, thank you so much.